In an afternoon that seemed common, a young American who years later would become world famous because of his works in the cinema, received a prophecy that would change his life forever. God used the mouth of a woman to warn Denzel Washington that he would change his story. And in this video, I will show you what was the word that the actor Denzel Washington received from a prophecy in his mother's beauty salon in the 70s, which not only had to do with his future as a servant of God, but that would also shape his career, interfering in the way he would interpret his most famous characters. What you will learn from this testimony is something very powerful that will speak to your heart, especially if you feel lost in relation to what you came to do in this world. So stay with me until the end because I have no doubt that the Holy Spirit will visit you. But before we start, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Just click on the button, subscribe, which is down here from the video, and activate the notification bell because I want to help you understand the Word of God in a simple and easy way every day, okay? So come on. On one afternoon like any other, in the year 1975, in his mother's beauty salon, Denzel Washington's life was marked by a prophecy that he would never forget. The boy, who was only 21 years old and was still far from being the actor he would become years later, was sitting in a chair when a woman began to watch the young man through the mirror. At that moment, that client of Denzel's mother, Washington, felt the move of the Holy Spirit and delivered a message that would direct his steps many years later. Let's see the video in which the actor tells this story to presenter Oprah Winfrey, owner of the most famous interview program on American TV. But she wrote prophecy and she said, she said, you're going to travel the world mm -hmm. and you're going to speak to millions of people. And I asked my mother, I said, well, who is this woman? The gift of prophecy. She said, well, she's one of the oldest church members in the town. And, and she she's had known that gift. to have the gift of prophecy. And she wrote down third, 1975. She wrote prophecy. So I thought, is, so am I supposed to become a preacher? I asked my pastor, should I become a preacher? He's like, no, no, you're doing good. Right where you are. <laughs> He says, you are a preacher. <laughs> so I, I, I have always looked at, I'm saying all this to say, I have always looked at what I do as, not preaching, but maybe as my pulpit, you know, to it, the roles that I played, I looked at the spiritual evolution of those characters, not just the characters. People. At that moment, the young Denzel Washington had a supernatural encounter with God, but he had no idea what that really meant. Because as much as he had grown up in a Christian home, he had not yet given his life to Jesus, he had only heard about him. Denzel graduated from the theater college and little by little he began to conquer fame and recognition that made him one of the great names of Hollywood, but the success and the things it offers led the actor to even more distant paths from God. But as the Lord himself said through the prophet Isaiah, no word that comes out of his mouth comes back empty but it fulfills all his desire and reaches the purpose by which it was sent. Time then passed, and in the early 1990s, Denzel Washington finally converted, recognized Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and began to live a new moment in his story. It was during a lunch with his pastor that he remembered the prophecy that God had delivered through the prophetess Ruth Green inside the beauty salon of his mother. Let's see the video in which the actor and his spiritual leader remember that moment. That moment, the power of that moment, you and I, when we were at lunch, you were telling me like it happened to you the day before we went to lunch. Right. It was still so real and so powerful. And that kept you somewhat grounded as you were exposed to other things, correct? Accepted it. I definitely experienced it, but I wasn't ready to live it. Ah. ah. I wasn't ready to live it. That was 90, I don't know how old I was then, but I wasn't ready to live it then. And and I'm I'm sure I'm not the only one who obviously not the only one who's gone through that kind of experience. So right. so, right. so I had to I had to go through all of that. Just like in the life of any Christian, the first steps with God are not free from struggles. In several interviews, Denzel Washington said that he faced many difficulties to align his career with his faith because the films he made often included scenes of violence, sensuality, and had dark themes, everything very different from what he started to believe. So much so that in the excerpt that we just saw from the conversation between Denzel and his pastor, he recognizes that at that time he was not ready to live the prophecy he had received when he was still young, because there were many internal battles inside his heart that needed to be won. 
But there is a specific moment in Denzel Washington's life that the Holy Spirit touches his heart with a biblical passage and makes him change part of the script of one of the darkest films of his career to start answering his call. Let's watch together the excerpt of the testimony in which the actor talks about the film, Asterisk Training Day, Asterisk. I always looked for that, for lack of a better word, angle. What's the story? That the only thing I wrote on the cover of Training Day was the wages of sin is death. I had the end of that film changed. For in order for me to justify living in the worst way, I had to die in the worst way. He died in a very small way in the, in the script. But I purposely wanted him to be knocked down on the ground and crawl like a snake. I purposely wanted everyone in the community to turn on him and I wanted him to die in the most violent way. So for many, many years and decades, I did that through my work and through my philanthropy and through being a good guy and all of those things. That's not the case anymore. It may be that you don't know his career in movies very well, but Training Day is a film where he plays a villain who is a corrupt policeman addicted to drugs that is totally out of control and that does not make an effort to harm a young policeman who enters his office and starts working as his partner. When Denzel received the script for the film, he felt a very strong desire in his heart to add the biblical teaching of Romans 6.23 that says that the salary of sin is death, changing the end of the story of his character with the aim of leading the public to the reflection that a person who leads a life of sin and does not repent of his mistakes cannot have a good destiny. One thing that draws attention in all this story are the time intervals in which things happen. Denzel Washington receives the prophecy that he will take the word of the Lord to millions of people around the world in 1975, and he only converts and gives his life to Jesus in the 1990s, that is, more than 15 years later. The film Training Day was released in 2001, 16 years after the conversion of the actor. This leads us to the passage of Romans chapter 11, verse 29, which says that the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. That is, the plans of God do not fail and do not fail to be fulfilled. Pass the time to pass. Denzel received his promise at 21 years and only began to live it at 47, something that caused him consequences. See what he talks about the dangers of fame. Yes, I've been high up on the mountain. I've been blessed, but that's a slippery slope. Yeah. And it's lonely up there. Yeah. yeah. You know, people don't know that side of it. And now, hear how he recognizes that the role of the villain he played on Training Day was actually easier to play than any role where he was the hero and the good guy. I put it this way, Training Day is the easiest part I play. There's more of that in me than Cry Freedom or even Malcolm X. Life has humbled me. I used to say I wanted to be the best actor in the world. When I won the second Oscar, I said I wanted to be the best actor I could be. Now I don't even necessarily want to be an actor. It's not my goal anymore. It's not a burning desire for me. I may segue out of it in the next few years, if not sooner. But to go all the way back to your question, none of that would have happened without the family. Notice that Denzel confesses that for him, it was much easier to play a villain than a hero. And that's because evil is rooted in us. It is part of our fallen nature, broken by sin. But the actor also shows that we need a savior. And from that movie, he starts talking about Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross in all the opportunities he has, be it TV interviews, on radios, or magazines from the United States and other countries. And who knows, the same is not happening to you, my dear brother and sister. Maybe you have accepted Christ for some time, but you have not yet started to attend the call of God for your life. It may be that you have not received a prophecy as direct as Denzel Washington received, but all of us Christians, when we give our life to Jesus, we receive the mission of going and spreading his good news to other people who still do not know him. Denzel's story, over the last few decades, shows us that he faced many struggles, felt unprepared, and even doubted his ability but the time came when he needed to follow the path that God had drawn for him. And in the same way, God is showing you that you are also capable. And if he chose you, it is because he will enable you. Just put yourself at his disposal and say, here I am, sir. And today, close to completing 70 years of age, Denzel Washington lives fully the plans of God that were given to him when he was only 21 years old. Let's see what he said about it. Not just to do good the right way, but to honor my mother and my father by the way I live my life the rest of my days on this earth. I'm here to serve, to help, 
in every prayer, you know, the ego is interesting. You just don't know. But in every prayer, all I hear is feed my sheep. Hmm. That's what God wants me to do. I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, what I found out in the last couple of years of hearing it, that there's all kinds of sheep. <laughs> Not everybody wants to go right to the. So that's why I talk to experienced shepherds <laughs> like yourself to, 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 to help guide me. So to make a long story longer. Over time, Denzel Washington realized that he would not need to become a preacher to fulfill the prophecy of God in his life. He understood that he could use his work to influence people and take advantage of his position in society to speak about faith, justice, and humanity according to what the Bible preaches. And in this powerful discourse that we just heard, he explained that he did not see himself as a simple actor, but as a servant of God, using his tools to feed the sheep. A proof that Denzel Washington has moved on to take this new philosophy of life to the screens of the cinema are the characters he played after Training Day. I now separated a list with five films in which the actor carries a message of faith and hope to millions of people around the world through his work. The first film, Man on Fire. In this film from 2004, Denzel Washington plays a former CIA agent who finds redemption by protecting a young girl from kidnappers. The character of Denzel demonstrates altruistic sacrifice and love while fighting to save the girl's life, giving a clear example of what Jesus did for humanity, giving his own life so that we were saved from the claws of sin and eternal condemnation. The second film, The Book of Eli, released in 2010, The Book of Eli shows a man who has the mission of protecting the last known copy of the Bible after a global apocalypse. Through this role, Denzel explores themes of faith, divine purpose, shows the importance of the Word of God as a guide for humanity in times of despair and chaos. The third film, Flight. In the film Flight from 2012, Denzel plays a pilot who, despite being heroic, when saving a flight full of people from a great disaster, faces serious personal problems, including alcohol addiction and drugs. The film shows the journey of this man who regrets his sins, seeks forgiveness, and finds redemption after recognizing his mistakes in the past. And with this narrative, Denzel Washington shows the public that no person is too sinful to the point of not deserving forgiveness and a second chance from God, as long as he regrets and seeks a change of direction. The fourth film, Fences. In 2016, Denzel Washington was the main actor and also the director of this film, which deals with a man named Troy, a father of a family from the 50s, who works as a garbage collector and struggles with responsibilities in a divided America between whites and blacks. The film shows that despite all the difficulties, it is the duty of man to keep unburdened in his home, moral and Christian values, because they are the ones who support the family in times of difficulty. The fifth film, Roman J. Israel. In this film from 2017, Denzel Washington plays a conservative lawyer who has a devastated life after a series of turbulent events, such as the death of his partner. The film addresses themes of justice, integrity, and the struggle to maintain ethical principles under the pressure of a society increasingly less focused on Christian values and focused only on what is earthly and temporary. The actor's intention was to show that it will always be worth fighting for justice and for rectitude, remaining faithful to ethical and moral values that are linked to the Word of God. Realize that except in Asterisk, the book of Eli Asterisk, Denzel Washington did not speak directly about God, but even so, he preached about the Lord in all his works, transmitting messages that are directly linked to his word. The story of Denzel Washington is a living testimony of how faith can guide and transform a life in unimaginable ways. The prophecy that he received in his mother's living room not only spoke about his global influence as an artist, but also shaped him as a spiritual leader on a global stage. He lived the prophecy, and his journey inspires us to understand that our faith and our purpose in this world can be aligned to the service of the Lord. Not everyone was called to be pastors or prophets, but we were all chosen by God to raise his word of grace, mercy, and love to those who are around us through what we do. So it doesn't matter if you work on television, on a bank, or in the supermarket. The Lord wants to use you to be a channel of blessing right where you are, amen? Just accept your call. I'm Pastor Antonio Jr. If you liked this message, share it with the most people and subscribe to my channel. I'll wait for you in the next video. May God bless you powerfully.